Hello and welcome. My name is Eric Schmidt from Cartoon Smart. Uh, the tutorial today is how to create a missile war game using ActionScript 3.0 and Flash CS3. We'll be starting off with a basic file that contains most of the artwork and from there we'll build on it to create the complete game. Let's see, what we're going to do is we're going to start up uh, Flash CS3. Um, I kind of have a condensed version of it here so uh, I know I can't fit everything that um, I need to like I would if I was developing it by myself so I have it kind of condensed here by minimizing some of the um, functions in CS3 so uh, you can kind of set it up the way that you want and kind of manage it that way I'm gonna manage it in this smaller constrained area but um, when I make moves and changes I'll make sure that uh, you are aware of what I'm doing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up our uh, first blank file which you should find in this directory um, depending on how it was downloaded you'll see that there'll be at least this directory um, missile war start then we're gonna have a missile war files and then there'll be of course a directory where all the files in the game is complete but as we build this through our steps you'll have the files as we go along because some of them depending on the directory it won't work and we want to make sure that um, you build it along with the tutorial therefore when you do run the program you'll end up with a program that runs here at the end so if you go into this first directory which is missile war start you'll see a file which is just an FLA file and if you open that pretty much um, if you get this error this just kinda I get this a lot when I um, get certain fi FLA files so I kinda left it in here instead of fixing it it's um, just a font issue and there's a little trick here if you say use default it's gonna use your default setup and whether you're on Mac or Windows that could be completely different but what I always do to kind of um, help myself out is if I say choose substitute you'll see what font is missing and then you can go on the internet and find this font put it in your um, font library of your system and then this error will not pop up so actually I have not done that for my system so every time I open this file we're gonna get this error and maybe somewhere here along the tutorial I will um, go ahead and put that missing font in place so I'm just gonna say use my system default I'm gonna open it up and what you should see here is about six layers in just a flash timeline uh, that are broken up into just three um, separate uh, clips here so one two and three and that's pretty much all we're gonna do um, with this tutorial that has anything to do with this timeline um, all the programming and everything will be in action script so we don't have to rely on the timeline the only um, places that we're going to put action script inside this timeline are just on these three keyframes these frames here well each one of them will have a um, an action script that just kind of controls what I have here kind of a start the um, a start screen a while the game is playing screen and then an end game screen um, you'll notice for this tutorial I do have um, most of the artwork shut off just so I don't have to worry about capturing all this but you can see this is what you um, will see if you turn these on and there's a scoreboard there's a background which in this case just holds this um, gun turret and um, there's some text in these other frames that are going to be controlled by these little action script sections in these little frames so if I just kind of give you an idea, let's say we, say we shut all these um, X's off the view here, you'll see that each one of these keyframes, these one little frames here, are just the the um, the portions of the functionality of this game. So that would be the start screen. This would be while the game is playing, and this would be when the game is over. So what I've done is 
just kind of broken it up into three pieces. And if you had other functions or different sections you wanted to happen before the gameplay starts, you can kind of um, jump through these by putting frame um, details to it. You'll see that this one is called intro. This one is called play. And then this last one here is called game over. So you can call these up from within action script to go to this screen and display, you know, the next the next section or the next level. Um, and you can kind of control that flow within these frames. So what you do need to do is you do need to have just some minor action script control on each one of these so the game knows what to do once the um, kind of this timeline runs. And then you can kind of uh, basically based on user input, do something. So what we have here is a button. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off everything here except for, um, let's see, which is the one for playable? There we go. Um, I have a button here, which is called, um, if I select it, you'll see it's called, um, I think it's called Start Button. Let's kind of move this text out of the way for a second. It's actually behind it. You probably could put that Start Text on um, another layer if you didn't want to have to deal with the Start Button. But you'll see that there's a button here called Start Button. And what we would want to do is we'd want to click on this first frame here and go into our Actions for that frame. And it'll open up this little editor. And the first thing we're going to want to do there is the second that the the game starts, we want to stop. And then for that button, which we call start button, um, we're going to go ahead and add an event, um, listener. Okay, and you'll see it turns blue if you're using the right commands there. And this is what we call a mouse event. So mouse event, good, turns blue. And we're going to say if it's clicked, and you'll see these little um, helpers do pop up. And then we're going to say when the mouse event is clicked, what do we do? We're going to do a function called click start. What that is, is this will be the function that will be run once that button, start button, is clicked. It's pretty straightforward. It's kind of like English. And then we'll kind of make a function here called click start. Okay. And a, a function, oops, we need to call an event. And it should turn blue. And we say mouse event. Oops. And I don't believe this is M-O-U, M-O. You guys need to learn how to type there. Mouse event. So what will happen is when that mouse event runs, um, we will go to and play. Oh, no, we're going to go to and stop in this case. And I think this needs to be capital here. And it'll turn blue. And we're going to say go to and play the other frame called play. Now, before we test this, um, little things like spelling the word function right it should turn blue. The I always like to, just to make sure, just cut and paste the function name. It's just kind of like a safe thing to do. And then um, to see if, I mean, of course, go to and play really has nothing there. So if I minimize this portion of it, um, it should just minimize the function or the thing. I can come over to this frame and go to my actions and just put a stop here. And then what that will do is if the program comes into this portion successfully, let's put our, whoops, let's grab our text here and put it back. So at least we know the word start is there. And if I was to run this, 
what should happen is this game should come up with the graphics and everything and then this start button so let's see if that's the case so um, what I normally do um, on a Windows machine is I think if you hit control enter it will run um, what you have so far I think you can also hit um, play here um, it's the same I think is over here if you say publish preview flash um, let's, let's just do that publish preview flash um, and looks like we have an error this is kinda nice because I like showing what the system does if you have an error it does give you this um, kind of a compiled error report which it's just telling me the type was not found or is not com um, file compiled time constant mouse event um, I don't know how this is being captured so I'm gonna go ahead and stop that close that and you'll see the game will kinda just hiccup and then you can just kinda close that um, I already see what the problem is but we would want to go back into this frame and um, go back to the actions and this is not capital only sometime do I um, you know show the debugging process sometimes I like this time I didn't see it but if I do see it sometimes I will let it run so we can kind of work on debugging technique as well um, most of programming really is debugging and to tell you get it right so that looks like to be the only problem again it also should have turned blue if you're using this editor um, similar to that one should have known right away so I can kind of minimize that it's always fun to make sure you save it that way you don't have to do things over um, I'm gonna go ahead and run this again but by hitting control enter for PC users and for Mac users ooh, I don't know so <laughs> not a Mac user but um, publish preview flash and it should just bring up the artwork you'll see that this little movie is running um, I'm gonna have to look at the capture see what this looks like and if I was to press start it would just bring in the next um, frame and just stop because that's what we told it to do so if you got to that part um, when the game um, actually runs you'll see that there are some other stuff that came with this file um, that little button that just says press spacebar to fire you can move that around it really doesn't do much um, the scoreboard is kind of important only because these are just text boxes that we write to from within the action script and then this little slider and a text box that as you slide it um, the, this value moves and as we get to the code portions of that um, we'll go over that so those are just kind of default in the initial artwork file so these aren't really even functional right now if you wanted to move this change this you'll understand how later on but um, at this moment I wouldn't probably start moving this stuff around until you had a, a little bit better understanding of these text boxes and how we write to them and this slider and how this slider um, deals with the velocity of our algorithm for the missile and then this is just a num numerical representation of this slider so you can kind of just ignore those for right now um, the next step with that we would want to do is the game play action so what happens is the game comes into here stops sets a listener for the start button when the start button is pressed it goes to this next keyframe and then from there we need it to do something so we want to actually start this game once it gets here so what we would need to do is open up our um, action script again where right now we just have a stop just so the system doesn't do any more than that and what we would want it to do now is just run a function and we're gonna call this start missile war which of course this function does not exist yet and this is where we'll get into the standard action script files that the classes that we're gonna use for this program so I'm just gonna put that there but I'm not gonna remove that stop at this moment because if I was to run this right now and it said 
you know, the next thing to do is run this function called start missile war. Um, there is no function missile war, and of course it would just fail. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that. And what we're going to do is we're going to click here, and you'll see that I have a document class, um, and I called it missile war. When I click in the just the standard um, uh, workspace, you'll see I have the ability to type in a document class here. And if I was to push this button, you'll see that a definition couldn't be created because that file doesn't exist. So what we need to do is inside our directory, create this file called missilewar.as. So now as you see, I open up um, my directory structure where we have the missilewar.fla, which was in this missilewar underscore start. Um, what you also see is if I go to missilewar underscore files, um, you'll see that there are the blank .as files that we use for the whole entire program. So if you want to copy missilewar.as um, over to this directory or just create a new file called missilewar.as, it's going to be blank anyway. Both of them are blank. So it won't really matter whether you create it or copy it over. So if I minimize that now and I come down to my missilewar document class and press the edit class definition, the file is there now. And now what you'll see is across these tabs, we have the initial FLA file and a blank file called missilewar.as. And this is where we'll start building our action class um, in Action Script 3. And of course, once we build the class, we will also include the function that we need called start missile war. So it's kind of just getting used to how um, the program talks from within Flash and the action script. And in this case, we're going to do it with this document class connection. So the first thing that you do in creating a class, an action script class, is what we call it a package. So in its most basic form, we're going to type the word package and we're going to open that bracket and then of course end that bracket so everything is kind of represented represented in this package and then we will build the file to do all the things that we need to do whether it's import something from the library um, functions setting all our variables is going to be done directly from this first file and then it could include other action files that we will include as well and I've kind of broken it up into four or five, three or four or five different files. Makes it a little bit easier to teach it that way. Not necessarily if I was going to run this program um, from start to finish, if I would do it broken up into multiple files. But again, it's one of those things as you start learning um, and you start seeing how different ones connect. If you have a another function or something that's completely separate from the game, maybe it has something to do with email or or sending information um, via, you know, something that's really outside of the game, you could use different AS files. Um, that's just kind of a preference as you start going through it um, and you start learning this, this class mechanism. So um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a few um, required files that are required from Flash um, I'm going to do one just kind of by whoops by um, memory because it's pretty much one that's going to be needed. Uh, flash dot all the display controls that manage how the um, system kind of all the libraries that are needed to um, display the information from within this file. When you're in the um, in the work area, that's not necessary because that's already kind of contained inside of this um, uh, timeline. But as you start using um, Action Script, there are functions that are required to display, in this case, display some um, graphics or do certain things. So display is one of them. Um, importing, if I can type in. Um, 
one that's for flash events. Um, and then we're going to say all the types of events. And if you go into the help files of um, CS3 and you type in, um, let's say, a function that you're trying to accomplish, and I will try to run back on these and show you, you know, where they come from and um, without going into so much detail. But these are kind of like just your standard include files. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type these out, the, the ones that I need for this um, package, and then I'll kind of run over the explanation. Okay, that was some fast typing there. I kind of paused it so you didn't have to see all the typing. Um, this is a utility for a timer. This is so you can manage text fields. This is so you can manage your controllers like the slider. And this event, slider event, is redundant to this. So this is being covered by this asterisk, but I do put this there so I can demonstrate. It doesn't hurt anything to have both of them both of them there, but I like to show um, if I wasn't going to use all the events and I knew exactly the ones I needed, um, I could put them in by name. So this is the event, anything that handles a slider, um, events that happen when that slider changes, when it gets um, moved, those are the um, type of functions that are kind of built into the system. So the next step we want to do is create our first class. And how we do that is we want it to be a public class. That means that it's um, not private. That means that we are this class is kind of shared by the whole program. So class, we have to... Now here's kind of the some of the tricks of this. We're going to open brace that. We're going to scoot down here. And you can see how I keep these lined up. Um, some people do it a little different. They might do something like this. Some people, some programmers might start just like this with the open and close braces. And then, you know, as they start typing, it will kind of align with the end of that public class. So if I scroll down my file, I can know at least where this brace starts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some variables and you're going to get to see another um, word that's kind of opposite of our public is we're going to set some private variables that are private to inside this class. That means if you do want these variables outside of this class, you would have to you know pass that information. So in this case, it's not really an issue but um, I am going to just set them as class private or variable private. Um, I'm going to start off the word var, means that it's a variable. And in this case, I'm going to set one called um, jjgun. And we're going to give it a external reference name as um, jjgun, just with capitals. And I'm going to start one here called, um, I'm not going to type all these, I'm going to, um, not live, of course. Um, I'm going to create one here called a silo, which is what we're going to be shooting at. And this is going to be an array. We can just hit enter, and then semicolon. And you'll see that, um, of course, in action script, semicolons are required at the end. Um, this is a variable called silo, and the type is array. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this just for a moment and type just the, the, I think there's eight or nine variables that I need to start with. And, um, I'll just build them all here. And as I need them, we'll come back up and see how those related to the functions or, um, the command that I'm going to run. Okay. So let's see. Um, I have one called bullets, which are the missiles. Um, I guess we could call those missiles, but we'll shoot, we'll stay with bullets for now. Um, a variable called left arrow, right arrow, which will can um, so we can control stuff from the keyboard. Um, adding the silos is basically a timer set for that, so that um, if you wanted to set uh, silos at different times, um, a variable called how many shots left, how many were hits, max silos. Let's see. Um, I think we're going to need one here also. Um, I forgot. 
where I was typing it called um, silos placed. And that'll mean integers like how many we've placed. So we can say, you know, what's the difference between max silos and how many we've placed. Um, sometimes, it, depending on the type of programmer that you become or you are becoming, um, sometimes you want to plan this out a little bit more than um, doing it kind of on the fly like that I'm doing it right now. But you can always come back and add a new variable or you can always come back and clean up code and remove variables that aren't used. But in most cases, I can kind of lay out the in my head the the variables that I'm going to need. But a lot of times I also um, kind of have built these variables because um, you know, I've done something like this before or when I'm doing a tutorial, I've kind of mapped it out anyway. So don't make it, don't think that it's just like me just typing, you know, off the top of my head. It does take a little planning, um, sometimes more than others for even less code. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my first function, the one that we already kind of know called start missile war. And this will be um, what happens when the program starts. And so how we do that is we're going to create a public function. And it's going to be called start missile war. And we do the same thing, open and close brace. And again, that's just a... Um, you know, you know, the way I do it, my open, get them out of the way versus opening your brace and then trying to figure out where you left that one. It's kind of just an easy way to keep everything together. And let's see, I'm going to spell correctly. And now if we go back to our program over here, you just want to make sure when you look at this action that I always do like a little cut and paste. So I'll co I mean, copy and paste. So I'll get rid of that. And I go back over to my action script file where the function um, actually is and then hit control V there that for that way it kind of saves you a, a step of trying to debug something that doesn't work so now this is where our function is going to um, start and the whole game will start right here so let's say for example I'm just gonna put a trace that says um, we'll just throw this up uh, game started and if I was to run this program now if I save that if I come over here and save this um, when I run this um, and I hit that start button we should get a trace that just says um, game started so this runs no errors and when I press this oh, my output okay it's a little slow that's just because the game trying to run um, this might be a capture issue I'm not sure if you're seeing it. Um, basically, my output should be programmed there, or you know, for my program. You can try that on your own to see if it works. Just close the game up. All right, let's see what happened there. There we go. Game started. I'll have to look at. Hopefully, that came up quicker than it was on the on this tutorial of me capturing it. So you can see that that function did run, and at least all this is correct. And you can kind of, if you want, trace is a kind of like a standard out way to s test debug um, on your on your local system. I don't think trace works if it was up on a server because um, you know that's a end user, so that's a kind of like a server client or um, local or server type of function. So if you put a trace in your game and it's on your website, it's not going to show up on the end user's um, um, system. You know, I think it's actually a security problem. I know that there's a lot of uh, talk about that on the internet. I'm sure you could Google it and figure out if you wanted to set a trace up. But that's just kind of for like your internal debugging. And I do use it a lot. You can also debug right on your screen as well um, on the... Um, you know, if you wanted to have a little text box on here, that's just a debugging text box. You could write to that as well. And um, it's just a preference. Now that I've set up those variables, I am going to set some values to them. So we have the variable um, shots left. <laughs> How much shots left? 
equals to, um, that's how many shots you want to give um, your user. Um, shot hits, those, let's see, shot hit. Um, let's just kind of set a, a spot, of course, zero. Um, we're going to have a function here called show game score. Let's not put that here because we're going to want that to run all the time. We'll have to, of course, write that function. Um, so I'll do another one here, max silos. That's going to be how many targets you want to be created on the table, and then how many have we placed. Um, most likely for these, I will go over them um, one at a time as I use them, and as we might need to come back and uh, add new ones on the fly, this is where we would come back and add those variables. Um, that's a function that we'll just, we'll write, for right now I'm going to kind of tag it out, but I want to make sure that I have it there. So as it comes into this, the first thing it does is at least check the game score. Um, let's create the gun. We had that value uh, JJ gun equals new JJ gun. Now how this works is inside the library, um, and I have this is the first time I really brought this up. If you look at the library that came with the artwork, control L, you'll see that we have uh, a value here called JJ gun. And what this is, is this is really one of the most powerful things inside ActionScript is we can create library items inside our main work area and then call them from within ActionScript. But before you can do that, um, there's a, there is a property that needs to be set um, as a movie clip, this being the name JJ Gun. You'll see that when this, if you would come into this, um, for the first time, um, it would have no check here for export for action script. And if you click, when you click this, it'll open up this class. So, um, and then you will give it a name, whatever you want to call it. These don't have to be the same because that's just the name of the symbol property. But this is the name of the class, class used for action script. So you'll see if I click that off, this is what it would look like the first time you bring it in. And then when you clicked export for action script, you could give it a class name. Now, if I go back to our um, our file here, you'll see that JJ gun is equal to a new that being the class. And now your variable inside this program is JJ gun. And now we can add the child. And it should turn blue because that is. A, um, of course, a call from within Action Script to add the child to the workspace. Um, so that really, if I was to run this right now, which I guess I can do it, you will see that it will, you know, kind of set up these variables. And it won't do the show game score because we haven't written that function yet, but it will go ahead and add that gun to the um, workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And we have an error, so we know what that deals with. And so if I click back here, um, it's shots hit. See the problem? This variable, which is, I like to have these kind of bugs because this is just about being more um, aware of the the code that you write. You know, when you're building a tutorial, sometimes you're not thinking like I would be thinking if I was just, you know, writing this from scratch. But it's kind of good to see mistakes that can be made. Um, the system catches it, of course, because it can't find that variable. So now if I was to run this and I hit start, you'll see that um, the artwork is there. I'm going to go ahead and close this. But the gun wasn't added. And we'll have to find out why.
So when we look at this, you'll see that this command new JJ gun and this add child of JJ gun means that this JJ gun is a function that needs to be called. So basically by adding this, it most likely if we had gone back and run that, it added the child, but probably at zero zero um, or wherever the default location would be for that. So we have to be a little bit smarter here that we want this function JJ gun to um, do something. So we've created this function here, new JJ gun. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another AS file, action script file, for just the gun function, meaning the placement of it um, and the maybe movement of it. So what we're going to do here is if we go back to our, um, our files here, um, we should be able to just create a new, um, just a new file. And we're going to call that one uh, jjgun.as. And as I change it in Windows, it's going to say, are you sure you want to change that? And now if I just double click that file, you'll see that you'll get now a brand new jjgun.as file that's in that same directory. So now when the function is run and the file being in that directory, that function will get included. So what I can do is open this up and create another package. And we're going to open that. And I'm just going to go ahead and set some basic variables here for display events and a timer. So I'm just going to go ahead and set up that basic part and then we'll come back and do the rest of the text. Now what we see is um, I've just added these three imports so this file knows how to deal with the display, the events, and we're going to use a timer um, later for the movement. Um, and then you can see I'll create this public class called jjgun, and it has to be spelt the same as your file name. And then what we'll do here is we're going to create a function, public function, and we're going to call it JJ Gun. Sorry, there. And we're going to open that up. And then what I'm going to do is for that value that's being called, we can access the value this. And then the this is um, the call of JJ Gun from this call. This new JJ Gun, as far as this is concerned, is going to be that value and we're going to set uh, some x and y value um, and I just this just happens to be from memory when I set up the art file have it noted on a piece of paper here <laughs> just of um, the rotation and the x and y location and we can play with that too um, another thing we're probably going to want to do at this point is when this enter when um the program enters this frame, we can set a listener to um, listen for some movement so we can move that gun by um, keyboard strokes. So I'm just going to save this right here and let's just see if we can get the gun added onto the artwork. Now I went ahead and save that. I'm going to go ahead and run this again and press the start key and you'll see now that the gun has been added from the library. But at this point, that's all that would would work at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's now see what we would have to do to get this gun to move around a little bit. Let's see. Um, we need to create a listener. And that listener will be just when it comes into this frame. So we're going to be, it's kind of a, a frame listener. So we do add event a listener. And of course it's going to be an event on enter underscore frame. And of course we want those to all turn blue. We actually go underscore there. And let's just call it move gun. 
And you just, one thing you want to do, a little trick is, if you are creating a function, you want to make sure that doesn't turn blue. Because if it's blue inside, um, you know, Flash in the editor here, that means that it's, you know, already a uh, vent or a function that's reserved from within, um, within ActionScript. So you wouldn't want to have um, a function necessarily called move. So you see it's kind of like reserved. So we're going to say move gun. And then outside of this function, we're going to create a new public function. And that's going to be, of course, my little trick here. I always cut and paste. And open and close that brace. And we're going to need to put something in here. E-V-E-N-T, which is event for the event. And that just handles, lets the system know it's a uh, function for an event. And we're going to now need to um, do something when this function is run. Or, you know, when this enter, when the program enters this frame, we kind of want something to happen all the time. And what we're going to have to do is capture um, some keystrokes from the keyboard. So, but before we can do that, we actually have to go back to our initial action script program and at this point tell it, hey, if certain key strokes are made, what are we going to do? So we just kind of add this thing called listen, whoops, for keyboard. Um, I just wanted to make one little note real quick. Um, when I did this, you might ha check this on this function. We're going to come back to it anyway. I had this as a semicolon as I just came through and tested it offline. I apologize for not showing you there. I did make this change, so um, look at your code. For uh, function move gun, I had a semicolon there. So you want to make that a colon so it doesn't err on you. Um, as we come back for listening to the keyboard in your missilewar.as file, we want to add a stage listener. So this is a kind of another little um, trick to have the every time at the stage level, go ahead and listen. We're going to add an event listener. Add event L I S T E N E R. Yeah, don't forget spelling is important. And then we can open and close that just to kind of get our thing and it's going to be a keyboard Man, there's all kinds of typos keyboard event okay for key underscore down and then we're just going to go ahead and make a um, a duplicate of this before we call the function and we'll say keyboard key up and then for those we just need to um, make some functions key down function which is fine and a little trick just cut and paste this to here and then it's gonna be key up function so that's what's gonna happen from the gun perspective uh, when it gets to this point adds the gun goes through this, puts it in an XY location, um, it adds a listener for the event when it gets into that frame to do whatever we have here, um, but then also um, when this is done, a key down or a key up, that it will run these two functions as well. That should give us the tools needed to be able to get that gun to move and change its rotation and if we look back at the initial rotation um, one thing you just want to note this rotation is equal to zero and that's from when we look at the library that the rotation of this library component is from this perspective so that being the anchor point so if I zoom up into this piece of artwork you'll see that this little dot right here is the anchor point so the rotation of this is zero so if I go into the code here 
and I would change this rotation to 90 or 15 or whatever, that would be the rotation of that gun once it was placed on the stage. So now what we need to do is first, before we do anything, is add some functionality for this key down and key up function. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and write these two functions right here, the key up, key down, key up function. I'm just going to build a generic function, not type it in so uh, we don't waste time for the tutorial. So hold on. Okay, so what I did is I typed these two functions. Um, and I'll explain what these are. Um, of course, the listener and then the function key down. All I look for is what we call the event key code, and then they all have numbers. So um, you can go online and look at the event key code numbers. Every every key has an event key code. You can also trace event key code and press one, and it'll it'll display that number. So what I did is I did three of them here, one for um, the left arrow, the right arrow, which will do the up and down um, of the turret, and then I added one here for the space bar, which is fire bullet, which is again a function we haven't written, and then when um, the key is released, we can just say our left arrow and right arrow, and we're going to set those to false. And then left arrow here, when it's pressed, it's going to set to true. And what that's going to do is, from our JJ gun function, when the um, um, listener for the event frame, it's going to listen for those key keys being pressed and now we can check for the left arrow equaling true or the right arrow equaling true and I guess we can um, start that section of it right now so we just want to set those to true if they're touched false when they're released and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and save all these files here just so we can uh, get back to a point where we can start testing this so let's go to the um, JJ gun action script and let's write our functionality for this listener for when the gun to move the gun up and down so um, what I want to do first is I want to um, add a couple kind of constant variables or just some variable a variable and then a constant first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, a static variable which we call a constant, and we're going to call that speed. And that's just going to be the default speed um, of the movement of our gun. And then we're going to create a private variable. Oops, not var. Var called last time. And this is going to be an integer, and this is just going to be our animation speed. Oops, SP. <laughs> That's the speed of how, you know, how quickly this gun is going to look as it moves in front of you. So I'm going to save that, and now we're going to come back down to our move gun function, and we're going to write in some code here that handles the current position, move it um, up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable here called time passed, and it's going to be an integer, and it's going to use the get timer minus the last time, and um, this is going to get us that feeling of uh, fluid movement so that the um, kind of the auto the uh, animation looks different and we use timers for that so this is a little um, calculation we say last time is going to be plus equals time passed Oops. okay and we'll see how that folds into this we're also going to create a new variable called 
new, um, let's see, rotation. And that's going to be of this rotation. Oops, rotation of that, um, this gun or that element or whatever it is that we've added from the library. And now, so if we want to move this, um, kind of say up, we would use the left arrow. So we're going to say move, um, gun up and, or left might be a, another way to just make sure that you know which arrow it is. And then we say if we close that up, we're going to use an if statement. It's just a little thing I get used to programming that way. Movie clip. Okay, oops. <laughs> I like having these in here sometimes because you guys are probably why you're watching it. That's not right. But okay, don't worry about that. Um, if the movie clip parent, which is the main, um, kind of the main timeline that we're working on, the main project, if the parent dot left arrow, and that's why we set over there the left arrow equal to true. So it's saying if it's true, if it's left arrow, it's just the programmer's code for true, we say new rotation which is our new rotation right um, minus equals speed times the time passed divided by a thousand it just gets it in a in a number that the action script can understand so um, new rotation minus, that would be if left arrow. So then what you can do here, and that's just going to move it. It's going to take that new rotation value and subtract it by this number. And you can make it probably find a calculation that's a little less choppy. Um, so we're going to say right arrow. And it's going to be new rotation. Is The only difference is we're going to go back down. So we're going to add to it um, that speed and the time pass divided by a thousand. So let's let's see. Let's take a look at this. Um, one thing we want to do also do before um, we want to set stop, kind of like a boundary. So we can do check empty boundary. <laughs> How about bound R I E S boundaries? Um, and we can say if new rotation, I speak better than I type right now, is less than minus 90 degrees, right? We say new rotation equals minus 90. That just keeps it right there. So it just keeps saying if it gets more than this, just keep it at that. And then we can say if we're going to take the same line here, as not to do too much coding here. If it is less than minus zero, we want to just set it to minus zero. Now it should stick it there in in place. And if you want it to move more or less, you can change those numbers. And then we're going to just reposition it. We can say this rotation equals the new rotation. Okay. So that should work. Um, all we need to do is run this. And I'm if you guys see any typos before I let the kind of the compiler handle it, you could go ahead and make those changes. Looks pretty good to me. I know one thing we are gonna have to do is come over here and take that fire bullet out of there because um, we don't have that function yet. So we should be able to save that, save that, and then we can go ahead and run this and see what we get. Let's see, um, well, we need to save it, of course, but we'd always save it before. Oh, and this is actually not get time. This is get timer because it's using, just looking for blue, it's using this utility called get timer. 
Um, last time is just an integer set to basically nothing at this moment. And then that last time will get us this value by time passed. So if I save that now, this should do it. So let's go ahead and try to run it and see what we get. So I'm going to just run it right from here. And for me, it's control enter or any way that you need to run it. And we can press start. And see, there's our little gun. And now if I hit my left arrow, oh, nothing. <laughs> my right arrow, nothing. Oh, you know what? Let's see, what did I do? So right now, oh. Oh, probably the problem I'm having is because I am in capture mode for this tutorial, so it's working very slowly. But you can see we are in, in wrong rotation. And on my keyboard, it looks like I'm on up and down arrow, not left and right arrow. So I think that's just words wrong in our code. I'm not sure what that's going to look like captured, but you can see when you test it, if you're testing along with this, you'll see it's up and down arrow and um, not left and right arrow. And that's by the number. So let's close this and let's just go review, um, catch us up on what that means. And um, these numbers are the up and down arrows, not the left and right arrows. So what I'm assuming what I have is left arrow. And no, I have left arrow, right arrow. Okay, well, I'm going to go offline and test this because it's too slow while I'm capturing to uh, display it fast enough. So I'm going to check to make sure, and then uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so that was the case. Um, I just changed the, the text here as I went to my public um, in Missile War public class and called it up arrow, down arrow. And then I came into our um, public function, key down function, key up function, and the values up arrow, down arrow, up arrow, down arrow. And then um, I changed it here as well. If, true, and true. And, um, and that's part of the problem of kind of coding on the fly, but um, it just makes a little more sense. And we'll make sure that the, so this is the files that you will end up with anyway. You just want to make sure that um, when you're doing this that you change it in those three places. In this function, in the um, key down, key up functions, and over here in the up arrow, down arrow, boolean, meaning just the true and false, zero and one scenario. Okay, so um, still when I did run it, um, I'm going to try to run it again online here while in the thing. Uh, my numbers are off as far as the um, up and down arrow, what they do. So if I run this, you'll see, hopefully now, if I put the arrow down, see I'm going backwards, and that just keeps cycling around, but that's down arrow. And now if I go up arrow, it just stops at the top. See, that's down, and that's up. So that's not the way I want it to work. I really want it to kind of go up and down this way. So my number is incorrect. So we're going to stop that. And we're going to look at our numbers here and figure out where we have gone wrong. So um, looking at this, this is part of part of the problem. When you do cut and paste, um, this is when the new rotation is less than 90. We want this to be when the new rotation is greater than minus 0. Um, I don't know why I use minus zero. I guess zero is the same. It's just to kind of keep everything the same. Um, but if I now run this, or if you go ahead and run this, it will work. And we should have a gun now that goes up when I push the up arrow to about 90 degrees. It's a little bit more than 90 degrees. And then if I push the down arrow, it comes down and it stops at about zero. That's where I want it to be. So um, that is that part of this. And I probably am right about one hour for this first portion. So the next section should be we will go ahead and um, create 
a firing mechanism. The one we press the space bar with a missile that moves with gravity and then hopefully put some targets out there for us to explode. All right, so that will conclude uh, part one of our missile war game. We created uh, two files, and um, hopefully we'll see you over on the other side. Part two. Thanks.